Hello, Kim Knight here from The Art of Health, aka The Kiwi Health Detective. And I'd like to invite you to join me on my free online What Creates Illness video series. And on this series, I'm going to be covering the different aspects of what creates illness or disease. Because often we don't ask when we get ill what has actually created this problem. And if we don't ask that and we don't find the answer, then it's going to be much more difficult to recover and to recover fully and completely and authentically. So have you asked yourself, if you've been ill, when you've been ill, have you asked yourself what has actually created these symptoms? And when I ask that question, what I really mean is, have you looked beyond the physical, beyond a physical cause as to what have may created your symptoms? Because often when we get ill, we tend to look for a physical reason and we often don't look beyond that. So for example, here is a list of some of the conditions that I experienced by the age of 18. And you may have your own set. And by the way, this is a great exercise to do to start piecing the pictures of the puzzle together, is to go away and look at every single illness or accident that has ever happened to you since the day you were born and I can assure you there will be a pattern and they will all be connected at some level. So by the age of 18 I'd experienced very bad hay fever which started when I was about six seemingly out of nowhere and of course the pollen was blamed. Um, lots of allergies, I had a very bad case of shingles um, hives, urticaria, um, ear infections, tonsillitis, appendicitis, urinary tract infections, very bad candida, and, and the general flus and viruses. And there's probably a few more things on that list that I, ha I haven't remembered right now. But that's quite a few things to experience. And of course, growing up for me, what I did was if I felt ill, my first step was to go to my parents and say, I feel ill. And then the second step was always, okay, well, either we go to the doctor uh, and we find out, you know, what's wrong, or we go to the pharmacy and we get something to put on it. And I do need to point out that whatever I say here in this series, it is not anti-medicine, it is not anti-doctor, I'm not saying that going to the doctor is not the right thing sometimes, but I'm taking a much broader picture of what actually creates illness. So, for example, when I had hay fever, I was taken probably to the doctor, I can't remember, I was too young, but I do remember that I was put on antihistamines. So in other words, I was given some medication to deal with the symptoms, in other words, to deal with the end result. And that helped, of course, it helped to, to manage the symptoms. And when I had shingles, well, apparently there's not a lot they can do for shingles, except you have to rest up, so that's what I did. And uh, when I had tonsillitis, I eventually I was put in hospital and had my tonsils out. So there's another option, which is a very common option, is okay, well, we'll operate, we'll, we'll take a piece out. So in general, the very common solution is either taking some medication or putting a cream on, for example, with the hives and the urticaria, it would be a cream to, to manage the, the pain or the symptoms. Or, as I said, maybe some, an operation. But this is really only putting a band-aid on very often. And in all of these, not once did we really ask, what is creating this problem? It was just like, okay, here's the problem, here's the end result, and let's just deal with the end result and just get rid of it as soon as we can, deal with the pain or the itching or whatever it was as soon as we can, and then we'll just carry on with life. And that was what I was trained to do as I grew up. But later down the track, and I haven't written them on the board here, but later down the track, I developed a whole new set of symptoms of even more 
life um, changing symptoms which really impinged on my ability to enjoy my life and live my life uh, such as clinical depression and chronic fatigue and chronic back pain and other symptoms and conditions so that was when I started to look a little deeper because I had to I had to ask okay what keeps creating these problems and it took me a long time, it's been a 25, journey, 25 year journey of investigation and research and eventually I did come to understand a much broader picture of what creates illness. And I found that there are about 12 main aspects of illness creation. And in this series I'm going to be going through each of these aspects individually in each video series or in each video so but I'll just give you the overview right now to start with so you'll see what's going to be coming up so stress according to Harvard University 80% at least 80% of all illness is created by stress and in my own experience and my observation of clients this is very true stress plays a huge role and so we really have to investigate what are we stressed about? Why are we stressed? When did it start? What is the underlying purpose of that stress? Because it does have a, a deeper reason and we need to really reduce that stress. And I will go much deeper into that in the stress video. And emotions play a huge role in the creation of illness. And initially that may sound a bit strange. It's like, how do I, how do I connect the fact that emotions equal illness? Well, I can assure you they do. And again, in that video, I'll be going into depth of why that is. And our mind, which includes our beliefs and our patterning and our conditioning, that plays a huge role in why we later may end up with illness. And our lifestyle and our habits and our behaviors, how are we living our life? And is that contributing to the build-up of stress and emotions, etc.? And, you know, are we losing our balance? And our social environment plays a huge, huge factor because whatever is happening in our social environment is, again, contributing to stress and emotions and, and maybe losing balance. And fulfillment. If we don't have enough fulfillment in, on many levels, then that again is going to create stress, uh, emotions, lack of fulfillment, which will later down the track lead to symptoms. And how we manage our energy. We have to learn how to manage our energy. Um, we, we have a finite supply of energy that we're supplied with when we're born and then we create more energy as we live through our food and through certain exercises. And often we're, we're wasting our energy and draining our energy, but we don't realize it until it's too late. So energy management is very important. And genetics and epigenetics. Epigenetics being meaning beyond genetics, which is the newer research that has come to light in the last 20 years, which has surpassed uh, the understanding of genetics. So going into epigenetics, and of course a diet, nutrition, what we put in our body, food, drink, of course that's going to make a difference. And if you've watched the film Super Size Me or that sugar film, then you know obviously if we fill ourselves with McDonald's every day or we you know have 40, 80 teaspoons of sugar a day, that is going to affect our well-being physically, mentally and emotionally. Obviously exercise plays a role, our body is designed to be moved and unfortunately in our Western society we spend a lot of time sitting down. It's just become a way of life. We sit behind a desk, we sit in the car as we drive to work and we're just not designed, the human body is not designed to sit so much and, and personally I find that quite a challenge, you know, myself working in, a, in an office job, mainly indoors. Exercise will make a big difference and something called geopathic stress so EMF electromagnetic uh, frequency uh, plays a big role and we have both man-made geopathic stress and also natural geopathic stress and that can affect and can, uh, our health and it can create illness 
And karma, what I call karma, which is what is, what is the bigger purpose and, and meaning to these illnesses? Because often, in fact, I would say always, but I don't like to say always. So let's just say very often, um, there is a bigger meaning to why we get ill. And usually, although we can't see it at the time, when we've come through the other side, there has been a life lesson or maybe many life lessons and there is a big gift in it. But we don't get to see that gift or have the, the understanding until we've come through the other side normally or at least until we're maybe half to three quarters way through uh, this journey of becoming well. And that was certainly the case for me. So these are the 12 core components that I've discovered so far as to what contributes to illness. I'm not saying there aren't more, uh, there may well be. Um, and there are many different aspects within each of these perhaps as well, which I'll be going more into depth when we cover each unit individually. So if this is a topic of interest, then subscribe, subscribe to my channel and then you'll get notification of when the next videos are up and then it's so much easier to find your way back to the channel rather than having to search again on YouTube. And I look forward to sharing this life-changing information with you.